Inflation is real. The CPI is at another 40-year high. The recession is real. If all your money is in the market or tied to the U.S. dollar, you're messing with fire. It's critical for you to take a hard look at diversifying your savings into gold and silver. Text COMMON SENSE to 989898 and get a free information kit on how to diversify and protect your savings with precious metals. With an a rating with the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands of satisfied customers, gold is the right investment to make now. Again, text COMMON SENSE to 989898 and get real help from Birch Gold today. Again, that's common sense to 989898 to claim your free, no obligation information kit on how to protect your hard earned savings with gold. Common Sense with Dr. Ben Carson. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Common Sense. I'm your host, Ben Carson. Actually, my wife, Candy, will be joining us today also. And uh, we have a fantastic guest, attorney Virginia Prodan, who we actually met in an airport uh, several months ago. And uh, we're just fascinated with her story, uh, which many people throughout the world know. But we're going to give you an opportunity today to get to know that story. It's one of the the most uh, inspiring things imaginable. And uh, so apropos to some of the changes that we're seeing in the United States today. And uh, we'll get her take on on some of all that. But Virginia, maybe you could uh, start off by telling our audience a little bit about your new book, and why it has that title. Thank you so very much, Dr. Ben Carson, for having me on on your program. And I'm happy to share um, everything that we we will have time from my book. My book is called Saving My Assassin. And uh, you can buy the book at virginiaprodanbooks.com slash product slash book. It's a book that talks about the reality and the atrocities of socialists that I lived under. Uh, and many people can can find um, the reality of this and can answer to others or to themselves uh, those questions. What I did uh, writing this m- memoir, I took the, the reader by hands and they will walk with me uh, in socialist and communist Romania in every area of my life and they will find out how socialist and communist works and also I brought them to America as I came to America and what America is all about. Because now I am an American attorney. I went back to law school this time at SMU and I, uh, I have my own law firm. I am associated with Alliance Defender Freedom and I go and speak in many places. I want to share with your audience that as from a younger age, I noticed my parents being politically correct, just like many Americans in, uh, in, uh, um, during these circumstances are politically correct. And my parents under socialists and communists will give up all the rights like everyone else outside of Rome and agree with the government and be fearful. But I watched them inside of our home whispering how horrible the government is and how tomorrow the government will ask more rights because socialist and communist government will never stop until we'll take all your rights. And as a child, I noticed an insecurity on my part that I thought nobody cares about me, no, my parents know the government, but also I noticed a fire inside of me that started to burn, a desire to find the truth and speak up for the truth. Because I have 
uh, relatives in, in my family that they were lawyers and they will respond to every question that our relatives will have, but they will not have the courage to speak up. So I went to law school thinking that I will find the truth and uh, I'll speak up for the truth. I want to mention to your audience, because it's very important to read in this book, Saving My Assassin, how you go to school in socialists. No, you do not choose your profession like in freedom in America or in a capitalist country. The government is the one who will decide your profession. And even after you graduate, the government will decide where you work, how much you make and so forth. So I, uh, I went to law school, I graduated from law school uh, and I started to work where the government placed me to work. And after a year or two, I was ready to give up my profession as a lawyer. I was so, so, so uh, discouraged that uh, I cannot find the truth. And I remember coming to my law office that day and putting my briefcase on my secretary's desk and saying, I can't find the truth. I, I, I will give up. And I remember she was surprised. She looked at me and like, what are you dreaming? Where are you out of this world? And she gave me three files and she said, Three clients will come to your office and one is in your office. And I remember going into my office and recognizing the uh, client who was there. I remember working with him for more than a year. And every time I work with him, he had a, a joyful face and a peaceful face, a joy and a peace in a joyless land and a, peace, a lack of peace land. And many times I thought that he was crazy, but I never had the time to talk with him or to fix this man. So here I am coming to my office thinking that I'm going to give up my profession, but God had other plans. As I look at his joyful face and full of peace face in, in a socialist full of lack of peace, lack of peace and lack of joy, I remember saying to him, I wish I had in my life what you have in your life and he asked me do you go to church and i stared at him thinking i knew you are crazy i don't know why i asked you <laughs> but he wrote something on a piece of paper and said that's an address to our church would you come sunday to our church and i heard myself saying yes i will come the craziest thing that a lawyer in socialist and communist can could do at that time because few months before, the dictator declared himself God and required us to worship him alone. So I went to his church and there I heard the uh, preacher opening the Bible and saying, reading John 16, 4, Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way and the life. Nobody comes to the Father except through me. And I realized that Jesus Christ is the truth that I found the truth, not in the law books, but the creator of the universe, Jesus Christ, is the truth. So I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, and also I accepted his appointment on my life to defend human and religious rights. And I didn't have to look for clients because I, at that time I didn't know that I was the only one taking them and taking the dictator to court to respect human and religious rights. Interesting. And that's that's really how you, you got your introduction to faith. Yes, that's, that's my introduction to faith. And as I started to defend Christians because socialists and communists works on lies, on, on hiding the truth. America gave Romania the most favored national statue. Hello, sweet candy, how are hello. You? I am doing fine. Romania gave uh, uh, United States of America, President Ronald Reagan gave Romania the most favored national status, which was a huge economical benefit, but it was attached with respecting human and religious rights. And by the grace of God, there, there are great explanation and how I found those laws that the government hided them from lawyers 
to use them and I used them in, in the courtroom and I, I, uh, I defended Christian and, and human rights cases. And more than that, the more I defended human and religious rights, the more the government targeted me. They will arrest me, they will uh, interrogate and torture me, they put me under house arrest, because at that time, when I was surrounded by the walls of socialists and we were isolated from, from the Western civilization, God did amazing things to protect me and help me to do my mission. Many of my cases became part of United Nations reports on human rights violations and part of United States Department of State reports on human rights violations. Many radio and television will publicize my cases. And with that, I expose a dictator to the entire world. So guess what? He had a plan to kill me. We need to take a break for Virginia Prodan and we'll be right back. If you're looking to streamline your audio advertising buys and maximize your revenue, look no further than Triton Digital's programmatic audio advertising exchange, A2X. The private exchange consists of only licensed broadcasters and top-tier internet radio publishers, assuring the quality inventory and brand safety you can trust. Visit www.tritondigital.com to learn more. And we're back with Virginia Prodan, her fascinating story. So right after I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior, I understood that Christ had an appointment on my life to defend human and religious uh, cases. And I didn't have to look for any cases because people will come and ask me to defend them, like uh, Students will uh, take Bibles from one church to another uh, for vacation Bible schools, and the government will arrest them, saying that they are spies for America, because those, those Bibles were printed in America. Uh, or churches that will uh, uh, ask the government to uh, maintain the church or to extend the church, and the government will put them on the waiting list and until the church will be in disrepair, and then the government will come and demolish the church and take the church and the land as part of the government. Doctors who will uh, um, talk with their, their clients about um, their situation would prescribe uh, medication and will give a Bible, or on the prescription will put a Bible verse. Uh, they will be put to jail for sharing the, the, the Bible or sharing Christ with them. But by the grace of God, because President Ronald Reagan gave to uh, Romania the most favored national status that was uh, tied with respecting human and religious rights, God helped me to find um, the, the law that the government kept it um, uh, aside in a special place in the library with locks on. But the way God works is one day somebody forgot those books on the table and it was exactly the day that the good Lord sent me to the library and I made copies. I want to emphasize to people, when you read Saving My Assassin, you will be encouraged how God guided me step by step. I am not a hero. God is the hero. He has done everything through me and in me to show the world, and he will do it in, in your life. And I want you to be uh, encouraged that God is looking for people that love to be tool in his hands that will change America, that will change the country that you are from. Yes, the situation might not be easy, 
because as I started to defend Christian and human rights cases, and unknown to me at that time, many of my cases became part of United Nations reports on human rights violation and part of Department of State reports on human rights violation and television and uh, radio Christian will publicize my cases again unknown to me I expose the dictator to the entire world so don't be discouraged of what you see because God is doing amazing things that maybe one day you'll be able to see it but do your job because God is faithful to do his job and because but at that point at that point you became targeted by Chichesco didn't you yes Yes, because I, like I said, I didn't know, but Ceausescu will, uh, will knew all those information. So he will send Securitate to guard my home and my, uh, my, uh, office. He will, uh, they will take me every day into interrogation room. They will beat me and torture me. They will ask me to stop. Otherwise, they will say that they will kill me or my kids. They will do whatever, whatever it takes. Uh, but I, God gave me the strength to go on and, and defend uh, Christian and human rights cases. Uh, and at the end, um, President Ronald Reagan, after so many years and so many cases, they were uh, publicized, and, and many congressmen, like Congressman Frank Wolf and Christopher Smith, and Secretary of State, or President Reagan, will come to Romania and talk with me about my cases, and will go to the dictator and tell him about the cases. You can imagine that he was very, very upset. So he decided that he will create the best plan to end my life. And this is the reason why the book is called Saving My Assassin. And before you tell us about that episode with the assassin, we need to take a quick break and we'll be right back. We're back with Virginia Prodan, uh, her fascinating story, and she was about to tell us exactly why the book is called Saving My Assassin. So because the dictator was um, told by the um, president, by President Ronald Reagan, that the most favored national statue will be uh, taken away because he was lying to America and uh, he was not respecting the, uh, the human rights or religious rights. He decided that he will create the best plan uh, to kill me and to look like an, a client uh, kill me. So that's the reason why the book is called Saving My Assassin. So he sent a client to my office and because uh, the dictator and his uh, Securitate army had all the microphones and everything installed in my home and in my office. They knew everything about my whereabouts. So this uh, new client, assassin, came uh, very late, almost to the close of the business day. And my assistant had only the time to introduce him to my office, say that he is a, a new client and I'm going to go and pick up my kids. So she left for the day. The minute that uh, my uh, new client, assassin, came into my office and heard that my, uh, my assistant closed the door, he pulled his jacket took his gun and pointed to my face and say, I'm not your client. I'm here to kill you. We did everything that was possible to stop you and you are not listening. And uh, he was so joyful explaining and screaming at me. And I didn't know why, but he explained to me that uh, President Ceausescu dictator uh, presented to them the plan and he said I want to do this and because of that he will be number one in his Securitate Guard and I was afraid I was shaking I was at that time I'm still I still am under five feet tall I was 82 pounds and my assassin was 6'10 feet tall man like a football player with a gun at my face 
and I was shaking. I felt alone with with my assassin, and I still I was not alone. I heard the whisper of God, share the gospel. And as I started to share the gospel word by word, because we didn't have Bibles too many, and when we had Bibles, we learned by heart Bible verses and the gospel. I started to recite to him the Bible verses, and he put the God down. His shoulders relaxed. He was like melting in under God's, God's word and power. And he shook his hand several times, and at the end, he accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior. And I remember after he left, staying there, thinking, this is real. This is really happening. I'm not dead, and my assassin accepted Christ. I hope you read my book and you will be encouraged that there is no enemy. There are only people created in God's image, captured by the evil one, and God wants us to be a tool in his hands to bring those souls from the evil tent to his cross. And didn't the gentleman who was to be your assassin play a role in the writing of the book too? Yes. 20 years later, when a few years after this incident, President Ronald Reagan decided to make a deal with the dictator when he heard what the dictator wanted to do to kill me and called President Ronald Reagan, called dictator Ceausescu and said, I make a deal with you. I'll give you one more year of most favored national status if you let Virginia and her family to come to America today. President Reagan was very concerned about our lives. The dictator said, deal, but in a month, I want you to read a book because the dictator prepared another, another plan to kill me, but God stopped his plan. But the reason it's called Saving My Assassin is I came to United States of America because President Ronald Reagan gave us the most, gave us a um, political visa and I didn't know English. I knew five languages, but not English. I had no money, no friends. I had two girls under 10 years old, and I was pregnant with my son. I learned English not as uh, fast as my kids. I went back to law school, this time here in Dallas, Texas, and I uh, opened my law firm. I wrote my book, and I speak in many places. My kids grew up, and I raised them as a single mom. And the first one graduated from SMU, the second one from Harvard Law School, and my son from United States Air Force Academy. And as I was, uh, that's, that's the best country in the world, America. As I was working in my law office one day, uh, a new client came to my office. He had a case. Uh, everything was just fine. He finished presenting the case, and he looked straight at me and said, Virginia, don't you recognize me? I was thinking, who is this man? And he showed me his Securitate ID. For a second, I relived that horrifying moment back in Romania. And then he shared with me what God is doing in his life. And I shared with him what God is doing in my life. And I was telling him that I will, I'm writing my book. And he asked me to let him write a chapter in my book. And today you can read his chapter in my book. I hope that you read, you pay attention. You read it maybe several times. He wrote it with so much truthfulness and love and, and explaining how uh, the government, the socialist government, when he was young, captured him with lies about free stuff, benefits, and things that he believed at that time and change and transform him from an honest person into a monster, killing people, helping the government to make others disappear, or planting documents in people's, people's life, in people's home, and so forth. And he also explained how God changed his life. 
And well, you I, you would be a, a perfect person to sort of tell us in the years that you've been here in the United States, what things have changed that remind you of Romania? First of all, one thing that I see is fear. People are so fearful of government. And many of them, not all of them, but many of them almost forgot a fear of God. They fear that if they say something, they lose the job. Our resources and our lives are in God's hands. We have to speak the truth in love and God will protect us. I see that the government, we as Christians, we are not involved as we're supposed to be involved in political um, arena and to be a changer of the culture in God's power. I see the government making an elite out of uh, people that agree with them and marginalizing Christians. And this is a time when we have to speak up in love and let the results on God's side. From the bottom of my heart, I am telling you, as a Christian, there is not a greater honor for us that to suffer for Christ and to suffer with Christ. You will see Christ walking with you, Christ giving you wisdom, Christ giving you power and strength to go on. And you will encourage not only yourself, your family, your business, but people around you. Do not be afraid. Choose faith instead of fear. Now, what about the school system in Romania? Did they spend their time teaching children the basics that they needed uh, in, in education, or did they promote a lot of propaganda? They promote a lot of propaganda. Like, uh, I, there is a story, there are several stories about uh, what they did in school. And I remember um, one time uh, the government will always say that the government buys um, books for kids and everything, but we were the ones, parents, that will do that. And I remember one time the government said, we are not going to buy uh, books. You parents go and buy books. And it was a shortage of uh, books at that time. So I remember going, anytime it was possible, taking my girls and going to different bookstore to, to buy the books. So here they were at the first day of school and they opened the book and the first um, uh, lesson on the book, he was a dictator with his wife and the lesson was that the dictator bought the books and they have to write a letter to the dictator and the teacher said close the the book and write a letter to the president thank you for the book and here is my daughter well, full of, uh, of courage and full of truth she wrote my mom bought my books I was there and I will thank my mom for that not the dictator dictator did not uh, uh, the uh, uh, you teach your kids with what you, you what with, with your action and the the teacher called me at work right away and said you got to come here and um, she said this is what your daughter wrote I called her to my desk and I said Anka that's my first daughter's name you wrote the truth but you cannot write the truth on a piece of paper you cannot do this. And she said it to me, you have to teach your kids. And I said, I have to teach my kids to lie. That's what you are teaching me. And I said, I will never do that, no matter the consequences. And she said, that's my last year as a teacher. And I will love to keep my job. So I am telling you what you are doing. But she also said to me, I talk with Anka, and it looks like at home you have a Bible for little eyes. If you remember that Bible published by Tyndale, and she said, if there is any way you can give it to me, really cover as a Christmas gift, I will appreciate because when I will be retired, I want to show that to my kids. Wow. So, that's, uh, that's pretty amazing. When you see things evolving in this country, 
what do you think is the possible solution? Or are we actually going to march towards socialism? No, I don't think so. There is a power in us, and Christ gave us the mission to change this world in his power. Uh, the Bible said, if my people, and we are his people, turn from our wicked way, repent, and seek his face, he will heal us and heal the land. So everything starts with us. We need to be involved. We need to go to school. We need to be part of the school board. We need to be part of uh, uh, be representative or be involved in politics or support uh, representatives who have Christian base and do what is right. And I believe that God will will change this. Ceausescu was so powerful. He has an he had an army. He had a talent to lie to the whole world. And I was a twenty something years old, under five feet tall, eighty two pounds, and God used me to change to change Romania. So don't be impressed with what you see around you. Do what God is asking you to do, because we all have skills, talent, and a position and a sphere of influence where he placed us, and God will change that. And I believe we have a possibility right now to speak. I also want to say to those who are fearful, please read chapter three in my book several times. It's a chapter of my own uncle, who was too fearful when the time was right, like our time right now in, in America. And he later, when he spoke, he was put in psychiatric hospital to be re-educated in socialist ideology. And he was not able to look for the rest of his life in the mirror, in his eyes. I don't want my friends, not even my enemies to live like that. So be strong and courageous and in love, speak the truth, because that God is the hope of America. Nothing else. Amen. Amen. And I also want to say it. God allows evil to have power for a period of time, a short period of time, for us to get closer to him and he will show his power. The evil one does not have permanent power. Look at Ceausescu. He is dead. And for 33 years in America, I am telling people in America and around the world what God can do to one person. We have a powerful God. Amen. Well, I just want to thank you for sharing that with us and helping people to recognize that you have to be brave. You have to have courage. And you'll have more courage if you know where your real protection comes from. It comes from God. And in this country, which has done so well for 250 years, we have to remember that you cannot be the land of the free if you're not the home of the brave. You have to be willing to stand up and fight, as you did at five feet and 82 pounds. You have to, it doesn't really matter what size you are or what size your opponent is, because the size of God is immense, and he can take care of any problems that we face. And also, we have to think about what is right, what is the right thing to do, and uh, you know, not spend all of our time judging people and trying to move things to our advantage, but just do what's right, and the rest of it will take care of itself in due time. So I want to thank you so much for being with us today. And uh, Ben Carson, I'm sorry to, I interrupted you. You are so right on that. And I want to encourage one encouragement for American people. I have been watching you from Romania and for 33 years here as an American citizen. And I have to tell you as Americans, because I'm an American citizen, we brought Christ, freedom, and prosperity to people all over the world. It's time for us to bring Christ, freedom, and prosperity back to America because we are able and we are capable in Christ's power. Amen. Amen. And Thank you so much. We really appreciate you coming and also... 
we appreciate you taking a stand when it was difficult, you know. Thank you. I mean, you know, allowing God to work through you, that's such an amazing thing. And also to put it all down in a book that we can all enjoy well and take a lot of life lessons from. So thank you, especially at this, these challenging times that we have now, because everybody, it's a time when we all need to stand up. So thank you again. And we'll be back with some closing remarks and your prescription for the week in just a moment. Well, we're back and uh, we hope you enjoyed that uh, session with Virginia Prodan. You know, there's a lot of lessons we can take from her story. And it's so impressive that this woman had so much courage to stand up before communist socialist regimes uh, that were intent on controlling other people, on ruling their lives. And yet she was able to do a great deal to bring that regime down because of her courage. And if we have that kind of courage, America will in fact endure all the changes that we see going on right now. Uh, and we see people who want to fundamentally move us from a country that is of, by, and for the people to something that is of, by, and for the government. And we don't need that. We don't have to try to be like everybody else. The United States of America is a unique place. And we, the people of the United States, are not each other's enemies. And we can't allow people to continue to manipulate us and make us think that we should be fighting each other. And we don't need to try to control anybody's life except our own. And if we do that, and we live by the principles that this country was founded upon, I think we'll be extremely successful. And now for your assignment for this week, I want you to think about people in your sphere of influence, some of whom may feel very oppressed and very negative about everything that's going on. See if you can cheer them up this week. Talk about some uplifting things, things that you're doing, things that they possibly can do to start focusing not on what you can't do, but what you can do and how you can improve your life and the life of all of those people around you. So until next week, make sure you go and join our podcast. Uh, and you can listen to the podcast on Spotify, on Amazon, or wherever you get your podcasts. Please rate us, tell others about us, and let's continue to bring common sense to America as we proclaim the principles of faith, liberty, community, and life. See you next time.